Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, attendees. We are beginning the panel session of the Dissertation Board for the Defense of the Thetis by Evgeny Stepanov. The Thetis was submitted in conformity with the requirements for Specialization 0, uh, 10, 0, 2, 0, 4, Germanic languages. The topic is functioning of precedented names in German media. By the order of St. Petersburg State University, as of the 15th of January 2019, number 157-1, I, Professor Galina Baiva, Doctor of Philology, Professor of the Department of German Philology of St. Petersburg State University, and Head of the Department of Foreign Languages and Lingua Didactics, was appointed Chair of the Dissertation Board. Now, I'd like to introduce my colleagues to you, members of the Dissertation Board. Professor Sergei Nefedov, Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Philology, Head of the Department of German Philology, St. Petersburg State University. Professor Zeta Chemikova, Doctor of Philology, Head of the Department of English, Philology and Cultural Linguistics, St. Petersburg State University. <coughs> Professor Peter Auer has joined us remotely via Skype, <coughs> PhD in Philology, University of Freiburg from Germany. Can you hear us and can you see us all right? Yes, everything is fine. Another member of the Statistics Board is Nikolai Bondeka, Doctor of Philology, Professor of the Russian Academy of Sciences, leading research scientist of the Institute of Linguistic, Linguistics, dealing with comparative <laughs> studies. <laughs> Today, Nikolai Bondeka has not managed to make it to the uh, session because he called in sick. Under the federal law, as of the 23rd of August 2016, number 127, on the federal law on science and state scientific and technical policy, St. Petersburg State University is entitled to confer its own academic degrees. The corresponding order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University number 6821-1 was issued on the 1st of September 2016, hearing after referred to as the order. According to it, the panel discussion is valid, providing two-thirds of the appointed board members are present. The total number is not to be fewer than four people. The dissertation board consists of five people, four of which are present, including one member of the board who has joined us remotely. He has joined us via Skype. We can see and hear uh, him all right, so therefore we have a quorum. Now let us let me announce the agenda. The panel discussion cannot exceed two hours. What are the items? Number one, the chairman's presentation of the documents submitted by the candidate for the degree and their conformity with the requirements. Chairman's reply to questions, if any. Item two, the candidate's presentation providing an overview and findings of the research no more than 15 minutes. Item three, questions to the candidate regarding his presentation. No more than two minutes for each question. The candidates reply to the questions, if any. Then we have reports on the thesis from the members of the board. Members of the board are requested to provide critical remarks and questions, no more than 10 minutes per person. Then the, the chair's report on the thesis and the candidates' comments about the reports on the thesis, no more than 15 minutes. After that, we have a question and answer session questions from the audience, the floor will be given to the non-board attendees. They can give a brief account of their ideas and or ask questions to the candidate about the research. No more than five minutes per person. Let me remind you that it is necessary to fill in the registration form and give their full name before the talk. You can see the list over there. 
remember to introduce before you take the floor. You can introduce yourself before you take the floor. Then we have the candidates' comments about the talks given by non-members of the board, no more than five minutes. Presentation of the candidates' theaters advisor, no more than three minutes. A five-minute break before the open balloting on conferring or non-conferring the academic degree. The discussion of the results of the defense is not broadcast. Members of the dissertation board stay in the hall, whereas other attendees leave the hall. Then we have open balloting, vote counting, and recording the results in the minutes of the session. Deciding upon conferring or not conferring the academic degree of St. Petersburg State University. And finally, the candidate's closing speech, no more than two minutes for that. Before we proceed with the agenda, I kindly ask you to switch off your mobile phones. Let me inform you that the panel session of the dissertation board is being recorded and broadcast on the internet, on the official SPBU website. The session is also being interpreted into English and into Russian. International members ask their questions and give their report in English, whereas Russian board members give their reviews and comments in Russian. If there are no questions or remarks, Let's start with item one on the agenda. This is the overview of the document submitted by Evgeny Stepanov. This is by Evgeny Stepanov, who was submitted in conformity with the requirements for the academic degree of the candidate of philology. The specialization is 10.0204 Germanic languages. The topic is functioning of precedent names in German media. The CITES was approved for defense by the order of the SPBU Academic Secretary as of the 15th of January 2019. The dissertation board was set up by the order of the SPBU Academic Secretary as of the 15th of January 2019. Its number is 157-1, and I have already introduced the board members to you. The candidate has submitting submitted the following documents to the SPBU Academic Secretary. An application to Professor Nikolai Kropachev, Rector of St. Petersburg State University, on the approval of the CDIS for Defense, submitted on the 24th of September 2018. The report of the CDIS Supervisor, Professor Lyubov Grigoryevo, Candidate of Philology, Assistant Professor of the Department of German Philology, the Faculty of Philology at St. Petersburg State University. A list of published works containing five items which describe their research findings. Four of them are published in peer-reviewed journals recommended by the Ministry of Education and Science of the Russian Federation. A letter of verification is of the 6th of December 2017, number 04A381, issued by St. Petersburg State University and certifying that Evgeny Stepanov passed three qualifying exams in the main field of study 450601, Linguistics and Literary studies. studies. The exams are as follows, History and Philosophy of Science, Foreign Language, English, and Special Area of Studies, Germanic Languages. He got fives for all the exams. Another document is a diploma from St. Petersburg State University certifying that Evgeny Stepanov completed an undergraduate program in the area of specialization German langu Germanic languages and giving Evgeny Stepanov the qualification of researcher or teacher researcher by the decision of Higher Attestation Council on the 1st of July, 2017. And the major document is the CIDES in Russian and English, a printed version with a manuscript copyright and a digital copy. The CIDES formatting and reference list complied with the Russia's state standard P700.
the above mentioned documents comply with item 12 of section 3 submission and defense of the cities of the order on granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University appendix 1 to the order this is it for the documents if you would like to check them or have a look at them I have a complete portfolio here on the table if there are no questions then let's turn to the candidate's brief presentation of his research findings distinguished members of the board colleagues attendees my thesis focuses on the function of precedented names in German media it's in line with modern trends in linguistics such as the theory of precedence and intertextuality. It combines cognitive and cultural approaches. The novelty is as follows. A critical review of theories of precedence and major criteria of precedented names. Number two, focus on precedented names as constituents of German linguistic and cultural dimension. Number three, analysis of their status in the linguistic system. Number four, study of their functioning in mass media. The aim of the study was to study semantic and grammatical properties of present names typical for German linguistic and cultural community and their functioning in media texts. The objectives are as follows. To examine the history and foundation of the theory of precedence to explore the concept of presented names, to study their structure, origins, and the possibilities of internal classification, to examine the grammatical properties, word building capacity, and other properties of German presented names, to explore the regularities in the use of presented names in German mass media. We obtained the data from online uh, copies of such magazines as Spiegel, Stern, Focus, such newspapers as FAS, Zeit, Berliner Zeitung. The data was collected from the electronic text corpus, Cosmos II, and from the German language electronic text archive, Das Deutsche Referenz Corpus. The dissertation includes an introduction, three chapters, a conclusion, a list of references, and an appendix, which shows the contextual usage of presented names with the reference to sources. The major research findings are as follows. First, state of the art in the theory of precedence. We identified uh, the theory of precedence and how it's related to similar concepts such as intertextuality, texture ministers, and cross-cultural communica communication, vertical context, and keywords. The source of precedence lies in the theory of intertextuality, which states that elements from one text can be used in another text. They reflect precedented phenomena, which reflect national culture with typical cognitive and semantic information. They are highly relevant for the representatives of linguistic and cultural community. The theory of precedence at the moment is an independent linguistic theory which is by and large being developed by Russian scholars. This theory laid the foundation for our research when collecting the German language data. The concept of precedence was developed by Karolov and his followers. Precedence, precedence at the same time is in the focus of literary studies and linguistics. Literary studies does not limit itself to verbal precedence only. It also views nonverbal national cultural phenomena. Linguistics is developing the theory of precedence within the linguistic school, the so-called school of text and communication. The representatives of this avenue, namely Bagaeva, Gutkov, Zaharenko, and Krasnych, look at precedence from a more narrow perspective. They only focus on such potentially verbal phenomena, such as precedented text or a situation, which can be verbally implemented through a 
unprecedented statement or unprecedented name. We critically reviewed the concept of a precedented name. So our definition is a precedented name is an individual name associated with either a widely known text or a precedent situation, which is familiar to a significant part of members of the lingua cultural community, appeal to which is potential and can be found in their speech. Here I quote the translated copy of the treatise. Precedent names are formed on the basis of proper names and occupy a specific intermediate position in the dichotomy of onim appellative because they can be used both in the direct meaning, denoting their direct denotate, and in a figurative meaning to refer to another person or phenomenon while acquiring the properties of appellatives. We have three semantic groups of precedent names. Precedent names which refer to the period of Cold War, Precedented names, uh, which refer to some public, high-profile public figures from different public domains, and precedented names borrowed from other cultures. We have worked out an algorithm to identify the precedented status of an onim. They have to satisfy certain criteria. Number one, it's a super personal character. That is, it has to be familiar to the average representative of the national lingua cultural community. Number two, the source of precedence, which can be a presented text, a presented situation, or a set of differential features anchored in the presented name. Number three, ameliorative or pejorative connotation. And number four, the so-called minimized nationally deterministic presentation. This includes a core with differential properties and the periphery with additional attributes. It comprises the core and the periphery with additional attributes. It is a certain mental construct or a concept in the cognitive framework of a linguistic persona. Number five, the conceptual blending. The source domain of the metaphor to be is a PM. The source domain of the aim is the notion designated by a PN in the context. The generic space embraces a precedented situation and attributes of a PN followed by a shift of two source domains, which results in the emergence of new conceptual dimensions. Depending on the compliance to these criteria, an onim can be referred to one of the three groups, the core, the periphery, or the onyms, onyms which are not precedented names. The core of precedence may fluctuate. An onym can lose or acquire its precedented status. The precedence can go stronger or weaker over the course of time. Pian precedent names are subject to active grammaticalization and lexicalization. Lexicalization results in partial dynamization of a precedent name. As a result, a precedent name becomes a metaphorically occasional name. The morphology is as follows. Number one, unstable gender. Number two, violation of semantic agreement. I mean, animate or inanimate nouns. Number three, use of plural number. Number four, use of different articles when the focus on it of typical qualities and a difficult definite article is used, when the bearer of the properties is meant, the definite article is used. What are the syntactic properties? Properties, number one, the position of the semantic predicates. You can see some examples on the screen. And a high degree of semantic selectivity, the semantic range of the attributes with which presented names can be combined is narrower compared to both proper names and common names. Most uh, common attributes are echt, neu, und, and zweit. Present names have a high word building capacity. A range of word building models can generate dynamic derivatives that retain the presented status of the initial stamp. The major source of new German presented names is mass media discourse. 
new presented names are usually connected with some high-profile events of uh, German social life, or those which become the object of media scrutiny. This is where their connotative meaning uh, is established. Why are they so popular in mass media texts? Uh, they're marked by high concentration of cognitive and cultural data. They're emotional, figurative, and metaphorical. They're concise. When we analyzed the localization of precedent names, we found out that they are mostly um, found in conspicuous positions. Leads, kicks, captions, subheads. You can see some examples on the screen. Here, precedented names can be seen in the lead, in the end, in the subhead to an article. Analytical genres use precedent names to make comparisons and draw analogies. In news items, they become part of quotes from of public figures and, and emotional genres. They characterize uh, interviewees. So we can find presented names in all these three genres, and they are implemented in a specific way in each of the genres. Our hypothesis was that emergence, development, and establishment of presidented semantics in onomous, also known as contextual semantic transformation of uh, presidented names, falls into three stages. In most cases, these three stages uh, take place at the same time. First, the meaning of the original onen is quantitatively extended to <coughs> refer to other persons or objects. Then there is a qualitative change in the meaning, which receives ameliorative or pejorative meaning. So it's associated with certain qualities of its bearer. It uh, acquires additional connotations which are then established in the conceptual space of a linguistic persona, uh, so that can be used to signify another object or person. At the stage of establishment, a precedented name can be used to designate the annotator or verify uh, other types um, of phenomena, a person, an object, a place, an event, or a time period. This phenomenon is referred to as semantic diffusion. Research findings reveal that precedented names make up a specific lexical and grammatical subclass of language and speech units. They are often used in mass media because they are concise, rich in cultural information, emotional. They facilitate more effective communication and new dimensions of meaning and imagery to the text. Talking about further studies, I would like to focus on the functioning of presented names in other types of German discourse, in particular fiction, scholarly writings, and everyday discourse. It would be interesting to have a look at how German presented names are borrowed by other cultural and linguistic communities and how this might affect their semantics. Thank you for your attention. Distinguished members of the board, do you have any questions to the candidate? As far as I can see, there are no questions. Are there any questions from the attendees? I don't see that anyone has a question. Now let's turn to the reviews submitted by the board members. All the reports of board members were uploaded on the official website of St. Petersburg State University. Apart from the reports from board members, we have got one external report from Professor Walter Harry. We only received that on the 2nd of April, so that was not uploaded on the website of St. Petersburg State University, as is required by item 19. This should have been done two weeks prior to the date of the defense. So now I'm addressing the board members whether in the end we can read out this, this report as well. 
uh, Professor Auer, are you against or not if we read out? No, read it out. So now we are turning to the discussion of the cities. And I would like to break the ice. Everyone knows the topic of the cities. I will not repeat that. I'd like to focus on the novelty and the relevance of the study conducted by Evgeny Stepanov. The study is relevant and novel because it's, the study is in line with modern human-centered linguistic paradigm, which the study the, is a functional linguistic, pragmatic, and cultural systematic analysis of the use of presented names in modern German mass media as a special form of mental and speech activity and as a cognitive and pragmatic means to realize a certain conceptual meaning. The topic is typical for linguistics. This is the generation of text, understanding and interpretation of text is given against the backdrop of modern paradigms of linguistics. These are cognitive studies, uh, lingua pragmatics, and um, cultural linguistics. This approach allows to analyze German precedent names with due regard to mental, cognitive, and psychological constituents which affect the generation of text, its understanding, and interpretation. The cities is theoretically valuable because it offers a classification and typology of present names through offering the criteria which shows that they are different from other linguistic phenomena. It also traces stages of their development. This approach allows to make a valuable contribution into the development of the theory of precedence. Solid theoretical foundation and a skill to systematize and interpret linguistic data allowed Evgeny Stepanov to develop his own classification of precedent names. So it shows that the study is written at a high level and is valuable for German studies and the theory of language as a whole. The practical value lies in the classification of precedent names, the history of their development and the interpretation. So this data can be used in lectures in text linguistics, cultural linguistics, German area studies. This can also be used to train interpreters and translators. The credibility of the study is beyond doubt because of the theoretical underpinnings. The reference list includes 127 sources. 45 of them are in foreign languages. Empirical data is ample. There are 200 examples from the analyzed from the corpus. The research findings have been tested at several high-profile conferences. There are eight publications. Four of them are in peer-reviewed journals recommended by the Ministry of Education of the Russian Federation. The hypothesis of the research is that presented names, which are originally proper names, are subject to lexicalization and grammaticalization during their formation that allow them to be considered as a separate independent class of linguistic units. They perform a number of special pragmatic functions and are distinguished by semantic diffusion, and this hypothesis obtained enough evidence in the series. The study comprises an introduction, three chapters, a conclusion, and the appendix. The candidate shows a good knowledge of the theoretical part of the study, uh, the state of the art of these scholarly challenge, and this allowed him to make interesting and creative conclusions. The major achievements of Stepanov are as follows. Number one, presented names are proper names by their nature, but in the process of transformation of their meaning, they form a special group 
in the dichotomy onym appellative. Depending on the degree of their deonymization, researchers distinguished fully usualized names, individual deonymized names, and metaphorically occasional names that have not undergone a full-fledged lexicalization process. The latter are able to show the qualities of both onyms and superlatives. The candidate offers the criteria of identifying precedented name. They are marked by superpersonal character. They are known to the majority of the linguistic community. This source can be either presidented text or presidented situation. Presidented names are marked by cognitive and emotional relevance for the members of the linguistic and cultural community. The internal structure of presidented names is the minimized nationally determined representation, which, here I quote, includes a core part with obligatory differential features and the periphery with attributes. So addition, these are additional elements of meaning of the present name. When the core is realized, the present name functions denot denotatively, and when the periphery is actualized, um, it functions connotatively. Number three, during the evolution of presented names, a number of complex processes occur in their semantics, which can be, in the case, represented as contextual semantic transformations of presented names. During the period of their establishment, the presented names can be used to refer to completely different concepts, time periods, events, designation of persons and objects. This phenomenon can be referred to as semantic diffusion. It has been proved that precedented names have substantial uh, word formation potential manifested in dynamic derivation along with the retention of the precedented status of the original precedented names. The major source of precedented names in modern German language cultural dimension is the media discourse, which reflects different high-profile events from economy, culture, and politics. The use of presented names of president, uh, president in modern mass media is marked by certain specialities when it comes to their morphology. Here I mean the plural and other morphological features. The use of present names in the German media is marked by their high popularity because they concentrate the cognitive and cultural information contained in them, their emotional and uh, have high degree of figurativeness. They occupy a strong position in media texts and can find headlines and leads and captions. Presented names are found in all the genres of modern journalism, informational genres, emotional journalism, and in emotional genres. Pragmatic presented names perform a number of specific pragmatic functions in the discourse of the media aimed at influencing the recipient and achieving the goals set by the author. These include the evaluative, the modeling, the aesthetic, the euphemistic, the ludic, and the aesthetic functions. It was interesting for me to read the, see this. It's written at a high level. It shows different types of analysis of data and combines theoretical and practical approaches in a very apt manner. There are many interesting conclusions that can be used both in uh, practice and that contributes to the development of theoretical foundational theory. I don't have any special critical remarks and the questions and criticism I'd like to offer is only for the sake of debate. First off, a few questions. They concern the choice of presidented names 
in the data you collected and the stages of your analysis. What was the original set of data that you obtained and how uh, was the choice made? How many presented names did you analyze after all? The questionnaire includes 26 present names. Why did you choose these names? And who chose them? Two names, Gary Müller and Müller Broad, were not known to any of the informats. However, later you actively used these two names in your analysis. Why? How is the method of continuous sampling was used together with the methods of corpus linguistics. How was that possible? Recently, uh, the German language witnessed the, the new uh, popular question, Weine, when interessiert es? Which is based on the name of the actor, John Wayne. This could have also joined your list as well. OK, this is my. Uh, subjective example, but what I'm driving at is the criteria of objectivity of the data you collected. We have a typical understanding of the theory of, of precedence, I mean typical for Russian cultural linguistics. Mostly this is used in the uh, in training Russian as a foreign language. Of course, your material can find practical application when uh, training German language. However, what about the uh, linguistic understanding of precedence? Looks like you have left that behind the scene. I have a remark about the structure of the study. The logic is fine, however, if we have a look at chapter 3, section 3.1.1, entitled Source Spheres of Presented Names, then it brings us back to the analysis presented in chapters 1 and 2. Compare sections 2.2, .2, Source of Precedence of Presented Names. I also have questions regarding textual functions of presented names. In a section which only contains seven pages, without any reference to the foundations of this classification, without any proper critical review of relevant uh, scholarly works that you cite, you focus on evaluative, modeling, aesthetic, ludic, and password functions. Is there really any question, uh, any difference between ludic and the password functions? Are these all aesthetic functions? All in all, the studies written by Yevgeny Stepanov is a complete independent study. It has a versatile look on the precedented names and the phenomenon of precedence, the candidate was able to achieve all the aims and objectives of the study. The city's function of presented names in German media complies with major requirements set forth in the relevant order of on granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And Yevgeny Stepanov can be awarded the degree of the candidate of philology, specialization 10.0204, Germanic languages. Mr. Stepanov, you now have a time to answer the questions and the critical remarks. The first question was about the methodology. I have partly answered this question in my presentation, yet I'd like to add that when making the list of potentially represented names, at the first stage, we used a questionnaire, we questioned informants, introspective analysis, and search of 
uh, possible names in the corpus. We also consulted colleagues from two German universities. The method of corpus-driven research allowed us to search and select potentially presented names. Thus, we formed the initial list, which was bigger than the finalized list. Particular situations where these names are used, we use the corpus-based research. We use that to verify the hypothesis we have in our work. The small experiment when we questioned German-speaking students is not uh, representative enough due to the limitations in number of participants and the age constraints. Still, they show certain trends. Many associations that they had repeated, for example, the association with the word separation when we talked about uh, the Berlin Wall and the association with the word confrontation when we spoke about the Iron Curtain. The association plagiarism was true when they wrote about Gutenberg. The names you mentioned, such as Gary Müller and Müller Brod, uh, for some time were actually reproduced in German media discourse. As you, uh, concerning the question you mentioned, Weine, this requires further analysis. The class of presented names is not a closed loop uh, systems because they can lose or establish their precedence. So it's only stable for a certain moment during which we conducted the research. In our research, we try to harmonize um, our Russian approach to precedence with some international approaches. For example, uh, the approach to precedence through metaphor. Here we quoted works by Lakoff, Johnson, Turner, Schroeder, and others. I quoted my own papers as well, but this is just a requirement of the university. In my scholarly papers, I have relevant quotes from those scholars who focused on the metaphor. We consider present names as a specific class of units of speech, uh, language, and discourse. In section 2.1.2, we speak about those phenomena which present names are founded on. A presented situation, presented text, or a set of differential properties. So here we focus on one of the criteria of precedence, whereas in section 3.1.1, we focus on different types of discourse where a name can become precedent. Some names emerged from religious text, others from mass media. So different uh, similar precedented situations uh, can lie in their foundation. However, they can belong to different types of discourse. Talking about the functions of presented names, we analyzed in line with the studies of Nehimova, Slyshkin, and Tyroskih. I agree that we should focus more on the critical review of these approaches. However, we highlighted in the CIDIS that functions of presidented names overlap and the boundaries are often blurred. When we speak about the aesthetic functions, then here a bright image occurs. The password functions separate the participants of this course into insiders and outsiders. Those who understand the joke are well informed, while the others are badly informed. What about the ludic function? Further, during the answers to questions, I will answer this question about the difference between the ludic and the password functions. Now I'd like to give the floor to Professor, Doctor of Philology, Sergei Nifyodov. Good afternoon, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Freiburg. 
I'd like to give my personal opinion on the CDs written by Evgeny Stepanov. As I do that all the time, I'd like to focus on the novelty of the study. Evgeny Stepanov introduces the new empirical data into Germanic studies. He also writes about this material in a very trendy way because precedented names are viewed as units of the scores, as means of communication, which help to recreate certain fragments of social reality and which are also used to show ideological and evaluative positions of the speakers. In this respect, Pax Stepanov opens up a new avenue in the study of names. The realization of precedented components in German mass media discourse. Thus, he focuses on which semantic, pragmatic, social, and cultural impact this process has. The hypothesis is rather effectively verified. Precedent names are seen as a special subclass. They're in between the proper names and the common names. They are used in mass media discourse to signify precedented. This is that is widely known public figures of a certain linguistic and cultural community. Different high profile events. Theoretically, the novelty lies not only in the study of the mechanisms which allow precedents to arise is mass media. Apart from that, he also unveils and thoroughly describes the nominative capacity of precedented names as secondary indirect nominations. This secondary usage of precedented names to signify additional associative information allows Stepanov to call that commodative use. And here I see some logic because a metaphoric transfer which is based on an analogy. is not based on the similarity of the denotator because different denotator signified. Here we have an analogy, and this analogy lies in different emotional and evaluative properties that constitute part of background knowledge of German-speaking cultural community. What are the advantages of the study? The data is ample. 41 presented names and 1,013 contexts of their usage. Statistics from page 9 of the introduction. This allows him to conduct analysis in accordance with different semantic parameters. Semantic criterion, secondly, the degree of familiarity. Here I mean nationally specific linguistic phenomenon, for example, and thirdly, by the type of evaluation. 
and here he differentiates between ameliorative and pejorative presidential names. Second advantage is that he focuses effectively on the presidential names in mass media communication. Stepanov identifies five pragmatic functions evaluative, modeling, aesthetic, ludic, and password. Some of the functions are not convincing and require a more in depth analysis of the text. However, this experience and approach is valuable anyway. There are some important remarks about the typical location of presidential names in the most conspicuous parts of a media text, which Stepanov refers to their imagery and figurativeness, thus making their impact more effective. I also find valuable the analysis of grammatical and lexical changes typical for presidential names. Stepanov provided enough evidence for his argument that presidential names are in most cases not used denotatively, thus to name particular uh, original denotator, but they are used to describe new persons objects and events in line with certain precedented properties which are widely known to German linguistic society. This is why precedented names change their grammatical and lexical properties. They can be used in the plural. They can denote animate and non-animate objects and show fluctuations in gender. All the above mentioned advantages speak for the credibility of the study and sufficient novelty of the study. However, the study has some inaccurate statements and some debatable issues. My first remark concerns an inadequate understanding of the role of connotations in the structure of presented words and lexicalized word combinations. This is especially true of the use of presented names as secondary nominations when characterizing new denotator. Stepanov focuses all the time on the fact that connotative, associative elements appear ad hoc during the transformation of the names. So they appear when new people and events are signified. In this regard, I'd like to hear your explanation. If we have a presented name, does it mean that a connotation, its evaluative component, its associations, aren't the usual, aren't they a part of the language system? What I mean to say is that most representatives of a linguistic community understand that they are stable. Can't connotations be stable? Because I find that this stability makes the metaphoric transfer possible. Mm. 
which occasional connotations, as Stepanov writes, will then appear in such uh, word combinations as Ein neuer Gutenberg or oder Eine neue Berliner Mauer. My second critical remark, the ludic function raises questions due to insufficient supporting material. This is page 127 of the CIDES. This function is called ludic or the function of the word play because the speaker plays with the linguistic meaning. In most cases, he plays with the polysemy of the word let me draw an example. Maxim Krongaus, in his famous monograph, gives an example. Cashier wanted, or the bank is looking for a cashier. What's meant here? A cashier has gone away with the cash, or they're looking for a cashier to be employed in the bank. President name with a commonly known denoted and um, usual connotations are difficult to become ambiguous. These critical remarks do not anyhow undermine the value of the research. I just wanted to pay the candidate's attention to the insufficiently evidenced remarks and to stir the scholarly debate. By and large, the studies is in line with all the major requirements stated in the relevant order, and Evgeny Stepanov can be awarded the degree of the candidate of science in philology in Germanic languages. Thank you, Professor Nefedov. Mr. Stepanov, you're welcome with your reply. Thank you for your critical remarks and your comments. The process of establishment of uh, presented names implies that an onym develops commutative components. Originally, a proper name is used to uh, name its original denotatum. Uh, the bearer of the name is associated with certain other characteristics, then this onim can be used to signify another object. This happens chaotically, and then uh, it happens regularly. To show this mechanism, I identified independent stages. However, in practice, these stages happen, take place at the same time. Such names as Snowden, Assange, or Maidan can have either a positive or a negative connotation, which depends on the attitude of the speaker to the bearer of the original name. This is what we implied by contextual transformations of present names. An onym can be used to call different categories, not only a person or an object, but also a time period or an event. You can see some examples on the slide. This is why I meant by the reconstructualization of presented names. As for the ludic function, I have touched upon that issue in my presentation and in my answer to the question to Professor Bayeva. The approaches to ludic functions are different. Korngaus, for example, focus on the ambiguity of a certain word or a phrase, while other scholars, such as Nehimova and Nazarova, speak about a linguistic riddle and illusion that the reader has to solve. If we take the example with Andreas Scheuer, the reader has to guess who he looks like 
and which event is associated with him. I have one more general question as a follow-up to the, to the discussion. So are there such names which connotations are usual, they are usualized? If so, then how can you account for your viewpoint as regards widely known precedented names? What do they mean and what are the associations and connotations behind them? I see that this is a part of the general background knowledge of the speakers of, in our case, German language. How do they appear at some moment? Otherwise, they would not be able to function properly. It looks like we are looking at the same thing from different angles. I meant that first off, we have an onim, a proper name that originally functions to signify a particular object event or a person. As there are certain events associated with them, they develop additional connotations during the process of establishment. It might happen earlier, but this takes place sooner or later, say in media discourse. And at certain point, these connotations become conventional and become part of the general knowledge of the speakers of a particular language. The question is how this happens. I don't mean to say that if we take some modern article and it says Anne Neue Berliner Mauer, that here we witness the emergence of some new connotative component. If we trace the history back to the emergence of this name, uh, when it was used and first was used as a president name. So to answer the questions, we have to go deeper into the history. The next report is by Professor Komikova. The distinguished chair, members of the dissertation boards and attendees, I'd like to share my view on the dissertation by Evgeny Stepanov. They see this? is written at a high level. It's theoretically and practically valuable. It's a comprehensive analysis of the function of presented names in mass media in German language. The candidate employs a versatile methodology from different areas of linguistics. He used a corpus search and updated data from Cosmos 2 and representative text from the discourse of German mass media. This allowed to build up a corpus of context of the use of German presented names with the mixed cultural and national specifics. So Stepanov faces a set of challenges typical for modern linguistics. This is the history and foundation of the theory of precedents. He focuses on precedented phenomena, studies, studies metaphorical use of onyms, studies the definitions of presented names and their typology, identifies the criteria to classify presented names, analyzes the usage of presented names in the structure of conceptual blending, focuses on grammatical peculiarities of presented names, specifics of their use, as well as their, as well as the emergence and development of presented semantics in onyms. The study, study is obviously relevant because he uses modern research methodology. It's in line with major trends in linguistics and he tries to effectively solve the modern challenges that uh, linguistics faces. This study is novel. For the first time, he focuses on the presented name, names and identifies the 
criteria which names which make the names presented. This multi hosted multi level comprehensive study is in line with modern requirements to scholarly works of these kind. The study is obviously novel, it's timely and demanded. It has a theoretical value because it provides a classification of presented names. The candidate identifies the stages of the development of presented names and offers a list of criteria which makes presented names different from other linguistic units. And this is a major contribution into the further development of the theory of precedence in general. The first chapter focuses on the theoretical foundations necessary to study presented names. There is a comprehensive analysis of material resources, analysis of the history and essence of the theory of precedence. This creates the basis to further deepen the studies of precedence. An important part of this chapter is the demarcation between the theory of precedence and other allied theories. This approach makes a major contribution into the development of the theory of precedence and its establishment as an independent avenue of linguistic research. The candidate highlights the advantages of the theory. He also provides a critical review of the theoretical approaches to precedence based on his data. Chapter 2 gives a critical review of the concept of presented name. The candidate gives his own definition of the presented name. The chapter contains an in-depth analysis of the five criteria of precedence. The focus is on presented names typical for German linguistic and cultural community. He uses the methods of cognitive linguistics. This allows him to analyze function of presented names in a text, and he sees that as conceptual blending. The contribution of the candidate is the list of 40 relevant German presented names and the corpus of over 1,000 contextual realizations of the names. And of course, the multifaceted analysis, lexical, grammatical, I mean, morphological and syntactic and word building analysis. This is a contribution for text linguistics and even journalism due to the type of the data. Chapter three, three gives the analysis of textual functioning of presented names. The candidate focuses on the sources of presented names, genres typical for them, their location in the media text, and their textual functions. A separate section focuses on the formation of presented semantics in onyms which is described as contextual and semantic transformation of presented names. I really enjoyed reading the conclusion to the thesis because it's really deep and it summarizes the research findings and the analysis. The major contribution is that the candidate provided an overview of the grammaticalization of presented names. He also established a separate class of classical units in the German language, and I mean the presented onyms. He also developed an algorithm of identifying the presented status of an onym. So he has showed uh, his research acumen I also find the reference list impressive because it speaks for the broad outlook of the candidate. It comprises modern 
Russian and um, foreign works. This, so this has enough supporting material as drafts and diagrams. All the conclusions are pinned up by statistics. All the conclusions are well argumented for. The list of presented names can be used in training students in such courses as linguistics of text, cultural linguistics, German area studies. The list can also be useful when training interpreters and translators. The credibility and accuracy of the study is beyond doubt due to detailed theoretical analysis, ample commentary of linguistic data, solid methodology, proper definitions of terminology, the use of statistical methods and modeling. I find that all the research findings are credible. The study is complex and versatile. It's really novel. The methodology is complex. Hence, some questions arise as a matter of debate. Stepanov provides an overview of scholarly works with a focus on presented names. However, some of the concepts he offers break the logic of the cities. For example, he provides an approach to precedence typical for literary studies. However, we see limited information about cognitive and pragmatic and communicative approach. This stays in the background, but there is no separate section or paragraph devoted to that. I would like to find out your opinion on the relationship between a metaphor and the precedent name, because on page 72 you say, a precedent name is a kind of a conceptual metaphor. However, it developed into an independent class of cognitive phenomena. So what do we have here? Independent categories or subtypes? Or is that just a kind of invasion or an understatement? Then there are some minor technical remarks which do not anyhow affect the general positive opinion I have of the study. Page five, you write that modern linguistics is an interdisciplinary field, but here you mentioned cognitive linguistics and cultural linguistics. You write about them as other disciplines. However, if we analyze these terms, rather they are just subtypes of a linguistic scientific paradigm. Which methods do you mean by the methods of corpus linguistics? Page 8. In general, the study conducted by Stepanov and the CIDIS is a complete and independent research. The candidate has solved all the aims and objectives of the study. The study provides enough evidence for its hypothesis, presented names are subject to lexicalization and grammaticalization and marked by semantic diffusion. This makes them an independent class of linguistic units which function in media discourse according to their own laws and regularities. They are used in conspicuous positions of a text and are used to communicate special pragmatic messages. 
all in all, this is written by Evgeny Stepanov. Complies with major requirements set forth in the relevant order on conferring academic degrees in St. Petersburg State University. The candidate Evgeny Stepanov can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of science, specialization in Germanic languages. Item one of the above mentioned order was not violated. Thank you. Professor Hamikov, thank you for your questions and remarks. I'd like to thank you for the report. As for the different approaches to precedents, first chapter provides an overview of two major approaches to precedents. Typical, the one, one is typical for literary studies, the second is typical for linguistics. Literary studies give a very, very general overview of precedents. A wider approach is the one that includes non-verbal precedented phenomena. Then I provide the linguistic approach to precedents. I further use that as the foundation for my study. On page 19, I provide an overview of this approach. Further in my study, I stick to the linguistic approach only. Of course, that's affected by pragmatical linguistics, and it takes a more narrow view than literary studies. As for the question about the metaphor, and the presented name. I have already partly answered this question. Presented names are wider in scope than a metaphor, because apart from the metaphoric part, they have a linguistic and cultural part. That's why a presented names is considered an independent class of the units of language and discourse. Presented names can function as metaphors in the discourse and become part of conceptual blending when they're used at the source dimension of a cognitive metaphor. As for the interdisciplinary approach, modern linguistics is an interdisciplinary science Cultural linguistics and cognitive linguistics are at the interface of linguistics and culturology and linguistics and cognitive science. In our research, we also used some methods typical for journalism and psychology. As for the method of corpus research, first, I use the corpus driven research method. I use that to look for and select potentially represented names. Then I use the corpus-based research method when the hypothesis is verified through collecting examples in the source corpus. We are moving on with our agenda, and now the floor is given to Professor Peter Auer, PhD in linguistics from Freiburg University, Germany. Mr. Auer, please yes, take the floor. Uh, we will be translating hello. your report into Russian. Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? You're just putting on your earphones. Can you hear me now? Uh, OK. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> OK. Um, well, uh, as you know, my uh, evaluation of this thesis is a bit less positive. <laughs> Uh, and I've not recommended to accept it. Um, I've outlined my reasons for that in the written recommendation, and I will not read the written review here, uh, but I will rather add a few comments and also ask a couple of questions to Mr. Stepanov. Can I just ask the interpreter whether she can hear me well? Uh, yes, I can hear you pretty well, and I'm interpreting that into Russian. Okay, it's perfect. all fine. Just if, if I'm too fast, uh, Interrupt me, please. Okay. Uh, perhaps you're a bit too fast, and the, the quality of the sound is not that good. So, 
Okay. Could speak you, yeah, yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me first say that I had to read the English version of this thesis, not the Russian one. Uh, and my impression is that the English version is not really a very good translation of the Russian. Uh, some of the terms used in the translation are not very well chosen. Uh, that already starts with the, um, the term precedent name uh, as it is used in the thesis. My interpreter now used precedented name, which I think is a much better translation. Uh, makes also more sense. But this is just a small example. So I think some of my problems with understanding the true contents of the thesis may also be due, due uh, to the um, translation. Okay, so what I would like to do is to ask Mr. Stefano for a question, a, no a couple of questions, a number of questions, um, and I will go through them uh, in the order of uh, the introduction where he lists a number of, he calls them provisions. I'm not sure whether I understand the term, uh, but maybe they are hypotheses or maybe also findings. Um, they are at the end of the conclusions in the thesis. Okay, so I go through these uh, provisions and I'll ask Mr. Stepanov a couple of questions regarding the provisions. The first provision is the theory of precedence originates in the theory of intertextuality and is an independent and integral linguistic theory within the framework of which national cultural phenomena are studied that include supplementary cognitive information on, are of high significance and relevance for the linguistic cultural community. Here I only have a very small question which concerns the equation of a linguistic cultural community and a national cultural phenomenon. Is a linguistic community and a nation the same? Uh, and particularly with respect to Germany, that's of course not unproblematic. The linguistic community of German includes German speaking Switzerland and Austria. Um, there is no German nation, which includes Austria and Switzerland, of course. So the linguistic community is in this case not identical with the national community. So the question would be, what is the study aiming at the linguistic cultural community or the national community. So that was provision one. Now let's move on to provision two, which is a lot more complex. Um, here it is said, precedented names or a precedented name is an individual name connected either with a vibrant on text or with a precedent situation known to a significant part of the linguistic community, an appeal to which is potential and can be found in the language use. Precedent names are formed on the basis of proper names and occupy a specific intermediate position in the dichotomy of phoneme appellative because they can be used both in uh, can be used both in their direct meaning, denoting their direct denotate, and in a figurative prefigurative meaning to refer to another person or phenomenon while acquiring the properties of appellatives. Okay, here I have a number of questions which I think are but that's central uh, to my criticism. And I'll start with uh, widely known, the expression a widely known precedent situation known to a significant part of the linguistic community. One of my problems is that I don't really see how it, did, how it is ascertained in the thesis that indeed these names are known in a wide part of the population, a significant part of the linguistic community. I have to say that some of these names are even unknown to me. For instance, Joachim Funk, Jürgen Landberg, Robert Häuser. Um, I just don't know who these people are. Um, so even in this little test, which was done among students at Freiburg University, um, it um, turned out that many of the students did not know all of these people, let alone the situations to which these people are stereotypically linked according to the thesis. So uh, an interesting case, for instance, is Konrad Schumann, who was also included in the thesis as a precedented name. Uh, Konrad Schumann is known by nobody in Germany, but the picture of this guy, an East Berlin soldier jumping across 
the Berlin Wall is extremely famous. So we have the picture, the photograph, which everybody knows, but the name is not known by anybody. So I'm wondering whether we can really argue that Konrad Schumann can be a presidented name as nobody knows this person. It's more complicated. He is a media persona, uh, but not through his name, but through his picture. Okay, so there are many of these names, um, which I think are not widely known, but the more general methodological issue, of course, is how to determine that something is a precedented name. So what are the criteria? And they are not spelled out, unfortunately, um, in the thesis. There is a second point in provision two, which I think is important. Um, and uh, this really um, refers to the distinction of proper names, which are used just as proper names to denote a person or an entity such named. Um, and their use um, in order not to refer to this person, but to refer to something else. Um, for me, it was not clear in the statistics uh, how these two cases were counted. So now I'm referring to the statistics um, given, I think, in chapter two. Uh, so for instance, if um, Mr. Stepano writes, Ste Stepanov writes that there were 412 tokens of 12 precedented names uh, related to Cold War issues, my question is 412 tokens, what does that mean? Are they 400 normal usages and 12 precedented usages? Or what's the proportion of normal proper names used to denote to a single person and those usages which do not refer to a single person? I think that would have been a very important result and a very important uh, way to approach the data, but I couldn't find these results anywhere, so I'm not sure how many of the tokens were actually used as precedented names and which were just used as normal proper names. Um, this is, of course, very central, um, and it also uh, would have been a nice uh, result of this study to know how much of these proper names are used no normally and how many of them are used in this figurative um, way. Basically, the question is, what would have been the criteria to count um, these uh, usages of proper names as figurative, figurative or normal usages? For instance, if you take the von Gutenberg examples uh, here on the slide, um, the first one definitely is a precedented name. The second one, I'm already not sure. And this, the third one definitely is not a precedented name. I think that would have been a, a question to be addressed systematically in the thesis, and unfortunately, I couldn't see that. There is a third issue uh, regarding still provision three, and that's the question of the con connotation or the figurative meaning, uh, which is uh, which already has been mentioned before in the discussion. Um, that's actually a tricky theoretical question, but still I would like to ask uh, Mr. Stepanov whether he has an answer. Um, as far as I can see, um, the theoretical framework of the thesis starts out with the Bakhtinian tradition of intertextuality. And that's of course one way to approach these precedented names and the most straightforward way of addressing them. But then very often the author also uses terms such as connotation, um, which is, I think, a structuralist term. It is not compatible as such with the Bakhtinian tradition. So my question would be, or maybe I would like to ask Mr. Stepanov to, uh, to elaborate a bit on this, the relationship between connotation and intertextuality. It's not the same. And of course, more specifically and more practically, the question is, can there be precedented names which just have a connotation but they cannot be traced back to a precedented situation. People are not able to do that any longer. Let me give you an example. Um, proper names such as Cassandra, like uh, Cole of Cassandra, um, are known by everybody. The, this term Cassandra is known by everybody in, in the German linguistic community, mm -hmm. but very few people probably are aware of the precedented situation to which this refers. So the word has all sorts of connotations, and we know what a Cassandra school is, uh, but we have no idea what it actually refers to originally. 
So here we have connotations, but we have no intertextual link. Would that count as a precedented name or not? On the other hand, we have also cases where the precedented situation is rather clear. If you take Assange, um, the, uh, everybody knows who he stands, what he stands for, the precedented situation. But the connotations are widely diverging. Some people think very highly of Assange, other people do not like him at all. So there is, not, there is no common uh, stock of connotations, but still we have a precedented situation. So the link between connotations and intertextuality seems to be rather complex. And I was wondering how uh, Mr. Stefanov would accommodate for these uh, complexities in his theory. Let me move on to the third provision. Uh, here, um, uh, Mr. Stepanov says, to determine the precedent status of the onim, of the name, it is proposed to use an algorithm to determine whether the onim meets such precedence criteria, and then we get a list. Here, first of all, the question is what he means by algorithm. I can't actually, I cannot discover an al algorithm, an automated uh, procedure to determine um, what is a precedented name on, uh, and what is not a precedented name in the thesis. But if we look at the criteria he uh, uses and lists here under three, we have first the criterion of a super personal character. I'm not quite sure I understand, but I more or less get what he means here. And then we have the second point, which is the identification of the source um, of the uh, precedented name. And that is, I think, a rather complex issue which is not sufficiently treated in the thesis. Uh, the question or the problem for me is, and I have really, uh, it has puzzled me while reading this thesis, um, how the precedent can be identified, can be identified, and what it actually is. Is it an event? For instance, in the case of Gutenberg, it definitely was an event, the fraud issue which the name now refers to? Or is it rather a situation? In the case of the Berlin Bull, at best, we can speak of a situation, certainly not an event. Or is it still something else? If you take the example of the collection Gurlit, which is also mentioned here as a precedented name, I find it really difficult to understand what the precedent is. Um, I also have to say here that in the case of Samlung Gurlit, I'm not sure whether we can speak of a proper name here. I think Samlung Gurlit is not a proper name. Gurlit is the proper name. Collection, Samlung, is just collection, nothing else. Um, uh, there is no reason to take the whole thing, this appositive structure, the Collection Gurlit, as a, as a proper name. The same actually applies to Geisterbahnhof, uh, ghost station in English. Uh, where I don't see any reason at all to speak of a proper name. Okay, then we have as the, as the third criterion um, for precedented names, the cognitive emotional relevance. I think, again, that's a misnomer. Uh, I didn't discover any traces of emotions um, in, the, in the text quotes. Uh, rather, probably what he means is emotional, and it uh, is not emotional, but evaluative. So they are assessments, evaluations, but they are not expressions of emotions. Maybe um, uh, Mrs. Stepanov could also uh, comment on this. Well, um, and then there is the criterion of nationally determinate, as it is called here, um, which is uh, clear enough. But I wonder why um, uh, Mr. Stepanov also included um, proper names such as Krim, or WikiLeaks, which definitely do not belong to the national discourse, but are, as he calls them, universal. They just don't fit into this um, description. OK, let me go on. Um, I'm almost finished um, to, um, to provision four, um, where it says, presidented names undergo an intensive process of grammaticalization uh, acquiring the qualities of common nouns, and then there's a list of uh, features. Uh, here I would like to ask uh, what is meant by grammaticalization, because it's not obvious to me that we are dealing with a case of grammaticalization. I rather think that we could also speak, uh, and it would even make more sense, 
uh, to speak of uh, change of word class. So we had one word class, proper nouns, which is slowly transformed into another word class, uh, which are appellatives uh, or common nouns. Uh, but that's, according to my definition of grammaticalization, not a case of grammaticalization. It's rather a shift of word class. Um, I was also wondering whether if we speak of grammaticalization, we would not also have to include cases in which this grammaticalization has proceeded to the, to the very end. So where we have a new common noun which derives from a proper noun um, and nobody knows it. Um, and an example would be uh, I don't know if you know the German word Verballhornung. Now that's difficult for the interpreter. Verballhornung. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, could you just uh, say this word once again in German? <laughs> Verballhornung. Um, can we just switch on the microphone and I can say this? Just one second. Um, Verballhornung. Verballhornung. Uh, those of you who really speak very good German will know what a Verballhornung is. It's actually a mutilation of a name, um, um, a distortion of a name. And it goes back to a guy called Ballhorn, who in the 17th century was famous for distorting the names he printed in his printed books. So nobody knows that it comes from this printer in Lübeck in the 17th century, but everybody well, at least the more educated people in Germany would know the, the, the word. So here we have the full cycle. Uh, something started out as a proper noun and probably as a precedented noun. And then in the end, it ended up as a common noun. It has no trace in, um, any longer of the original proper noun. So that would be the full cycle of the grammaticalization if we use the term. And I'm wondering why these complete um, uh, grammaticalizations have not also been included in the thesis. Okay, uh, then we go on to provision uh, five, which says um, that um, uh, the main source of proper nouns, of, uh, sorry, of precedented nouns in the German cultural society is currently the discourse of the mass media. I'm just questioning whether this is still the case. Um, newspapers are of course still important, but um, the numbers of readers goes down from year to year. And I would argue the most important uh, source for public discourses nowadays are the social media. So I'm just wondering whether this is still correct and whether we can state that the most important discourse takes place in the mass media and to exclude other sources such as social media, um, which I think today are even more important than um, newspapers or magazines like Der Spiegel. Um, and um, I'll skip number six and just go uh, to the last provision. Um, in uh, uh, provision seven, um, no, that's actually not number seven, it's uh, it's number six, sorry. Um, in number six, where we occupy strong positions of the text, headings, leads, captions, and can perform the evaluative, modeling, aesthetic, ludic, and password functions. This has been discussed before, the ludic dimension and the password function, so I won't go into this. But I found it actually a very interesting finding that precedented names occur so often in, um, in leads and captions and headings. Uh, but um, actually, I was not sure whether the data uh, really confirmed this picture, because if you go to diagram H in the thesis, I don't know whether you can find it quickly, um, where um, the occurrence of precedented names in the main text of the uh, of the articles, uh, the, the journal articles investigated, and in uh, the paratextual elements um, is confronted, we actually get numbers of 48 versus 52%, which is, well, more or less 50-50. Yeah. 
Um, so I was wondering uh, how you can argue on the basis of these results uh, that um, precedented names in fact occur uh, above full or mainly or uh, higher than chance um, in these paratextual um, elements. Okay, um, well, uh, I suppose this was uh, the last um, question. I have many small questions uh, which refer to the interpretation of single examples, which of course I won't go into here for reasons of time. Uh, my main criticism of the thesis is, apart from theoretical, um, let's say, cases of theoretical indeterminateness, uh, where a bit more of theoret theoretical reflection could have been helped, um, that the methods which are used in this thesis are not spelled out sufficiently clear. So we do not know how the statistical results um, um, have been arrived at and um, how the, um, um, the, the basic data, the, the classification of individual instances as cases of precedented names has actually uh, taken place. Okay, um, yes, I hope uh, Mr. Stepanov will be able to answer some of the questions here. Thank you, Professor Auer, for your critical remarks and questions. Now let's give the floor to the candidate. I hope he will be able to answer most of your questions and comment on your critical remarks. I'd like to thank you for the report of the series. First off, I'd like to apologize for the inaccuracies in the translation of the series and for the fact that I have provided the incomplete copy of the series because it doesn't have numbers and pages and doesn't have a complete reference, uh, reference of the examples in the appendices. Talking about the terminology in the theory of partisans, we used terminology from the works of Russian scholars that were translated into English. So I didn't want to invent anything new. So I used the terminology typical for these translations. And these are the words, such words as super, super personal character, minimized national deterministic representations, and others. So this is not my invention. I analyzed the discourse of mass media because media publishing houses use the names which are supposed to be known to the audiences because publishing houses count on the fact that these names are familiar to their audiences. As I stated in the cities, there are some names which are more or less stable in the German language and these are really relevant concepts for the German culture and linguistic community. Community. However, we also have fly-off or one-day names that exist only for a certain time and very soon leave the class of precedent names. The Russian scholarly tradition has an approach which is called symptomatic statistics. This was developed by Edmoni. It means that a scholar can use his own intuition in the analysis in such categories as something used frequently or seldom. There is much of something or there is little of something, and to use that to draw conclusions. As for the informat I questions, I did not mean students, I rather meant academic staff. These are professors from the two universities. I question students, and I have already said that this is just an addition to my work. It's not a representative uh, survey. I just wanted to outline certain trends. A precedent name can be potentially used in its figurative meaning in mass media. 
the name of Schumann. Yes, he is famous for his jump, but this is the basis which is behind the, the name, the present name. All these elements are in the cognitive basis or it's uh, within the background knowledge of German speakers. So it's a kind of potential capacity. In my corpus, I have some examples which use these names. As for the selection methods, as I said, I first compiled a list of potentially presented names, then using introspective analysis, questionnaires, and the analysis of the discourse in mass media corpuses, I developed the so-called algorithm to identify precedented names that are based on the criteria of precedence. I enumerated them in my presentation. The thing is that Russian scholars who study precedence do not provide any theoretical background for a certain name to be precedented or not. They look upon that as a matter of fact. So they at once focus on a particular name. However, I offer a list of criteria which allows to state whether a name we're dealing with is potentially presented or not. The next question concerned uh, the calculation of cases, how a name is used. So 12 cases of the names, present names in the period of Cold War. So we had 12 present names which refer to this period of Cold War. And we found over 400 cases of the use of this uh, 12 precedented names in the corpus. Precedented situation as the source of a presented name or a set of different differential properties as a source of present name. A situation here is not an event. It's a certain cognitive mental construct in the cognitive structure of an individual. This is a set of associations. If we speak about Gutenberg, then it's a situation about plagiarism. This is what we mean by a situation or an event. As for the relation of intertextuality, as for the relation between intertextuality and connotation, right? We started off with Bakhtin and Kristeva. But we speak about different levels of the language. Structural level is what we imply by intertextuality. Elements from one text are borrowed by another text. As for the connotations, they can be usual connotations. Cassandra, the example you gave, here we don't see the link with the original name with that situation, the denotatum that was in the basis of that. It's a completely deonymized name. And within our approach, this cannot be regarded as precedented. What is important is the connection which is preserved with the original situation or an event. So we speak about two different approaches. Ours is a purely narrow linguistic approach. As we speak about Cassandra, mm, a more working approach here is the one employed by literary studies. They can view this name as precedented. Talking about grammaticalization, here I drew on the 
experience of our Russian scholarly tradition of Germanic uh, German studies. It is thoroughly developed at the Department of the German Language of Hindenburg State University, so I had to stick to that tradition. What I mean to say here is that personal names undergo certain grammatical processes which are not typical for them. As I state in my thesis, they are witnessing the process of gra grammaticalization. The process is not over, which makes them occupy the intermediary position between common names and common names and personal names. The example you gave, that long, difficult word I couldn't repeat. So yes, this is, um, this is already part of the linguistic system. It's a stable thing of the language. I don't believe that anyone really remembers its origin. Our study was conducted from 2014 to 2017 and early 2018, hence the choice of the material. So I dare say in those days, traditional mass media was more popular. Social media and digital technologies are developing really fast. You are absolutely right. Still. On social media, we often find these days that there are links, hyperlinks to traditional mass media, their online platforms, and they cover events which are in the focus of traditional mass media. I mean, they even quote something from uh, the articles published in traditional media. As for the methodology of identifying presidented names as such, and as for their position in the text, I agree that I should have employed some other methods as well. I mean this ratio of um, the use of presidented names in bigger textual bodies against the uh, use of smaller textual bodies like headlines. Again, I can refer to Admoni, who spoke about these symptomatic statistics. Headlights, leads, kickers, and subheads is a big number of textual positions. So still, the 50% of the use of present names in these conspicuous positions indicates that this at least a uh, highly frequent position. I hope that this answers your questions. Professor yes. Auer, do you Thank have you. any more questions? Or would you like to continue the debate? No, I think you answered all of my questions. Congratulations on keeping them all in mind. Thank you, Professor Auer. The speaker is not using the microphone, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now we are turning to the report provided by Professor Bandberger. I'd like to read that out in a brief version. I will not focus on the structure of the CDS because everybody has read the CDS and we all know how it's structured. 
So the thesis focuses on the classification and functioning of presented names in modern German mass media. President names are phenomenon is a phenomenon at the interface of verbal, mental, social, and cultural context. A precedent name is an individual name associated with either a widely known text or a precedented situation, which is familiar to a significant part of members of the lingua cultural community, appeal to which is potential and can be found in their speech. The theory of precedent as the methodological foundation of the study shows that this study is an interdisciplinary and comprehensive research. The study is relevant because it's in line with the modern theoretical trends and methods of cognitive linguistics and allied disciplines, such as the theory of cross-cultural communication, theory of intertextuality, and text linguistics. Other relevant objectives include the development and of criteria of the classification of presidential phenomenon, the study of the functioning of presidential names in conceptual blending and their use in German mass media discourse, and the analysis of the development of presidential semantics in onyms. So Stepanov's study is in line of the modern trends in cognitive linguistics and its goal, which is to study presented names, uh, characteristic of the German linguistic cultural community and the characteristics of their main features, including the structure, criteria, grammatical feature, and usage in the mass media, has been validated. Presented names are viewed as a specific class of linguistic units, which are subject to lexicalization and grammaticalization and perform specific pragmatic functions. The candidate offers a new extended internal classification of presented names, and he analyzes this data as it is used in modern German mass media discourse. The study is novel because it uses a comprehensive approach to define the status of presented names and their properties and characteristics. Stepanov tries to unite the theory of precedence, typical for Russian scholarly tradition, the theory of conceptual blendings developed by Fauconier and Turner, who developed that in their turn, basing that on the theory of conceptual metaphor by Lakoff. So the study is within the avenues of cognitive linguistics. The sources of the data are such magazines as Spiegel, Stern, Focus, such newspapers as FAS, Zeit, Berliner Zeitung, and others. The candidate collected data using the internet application Cosmos 2, as well as Deutsches Referenzkorpus from the Institute of the German Language, which comprises over 42 billions of word, word forms. This allowed him to collect over 400 pages of the excerpts from articles, which contain 1,013 contextual usages of precedented names in the connotative meaning. He questioned 42 informants and studied historical events typical of the post-war Germany that was necessary for effective interpretation of the historical context and a set of 
set of um, correlations uh, between of the analyzed uh, linguistic units. This allowed to collect really impressive linguistic and cultural material. Indeed, it is the first classification which tries to comprise all the relevant properties of presidented names. The same holds true for the fact that prior to Stepanov research, we didn't have any studies which would offer a methodology to identify presidented names as such. This, this has certain theoretical value. It offers a classification of the criteria of presidented names and it also offers the model of the development of presented names. It's a major contribution to modern German studies because it shows how the names really function in German political discourse. It also makes a contribution into the development of the theories of pre pre precedence and intertextuality. As for the practical value, then the list of presidented names can be used in classes on German phraseology, lexical semantics, text linguistics, cultural linguistics, and German area studies. The examples from the corpus of German mass media can find application in training those students who are mastering German, also students of translation and interpreting courses. courses. The results of the study are credible and accurate due to an ample reference list, 127 items in Russian, German, and English, an ample textual corpus, 200 sources, and, of course, the methodology is also quite effective. This study is logical. Then I will omit the part which focuses on the structure of the cities, because we already know what it's all about. One of the most interesting conclusions of the study is that a presidented name is one of the subtypes of a conceptual metaphor and this can participate in conceptual blending in reaching the textual dimension. Further studies can focus on other types of discourse and languages the candidate classified the properties. For example, the special structure of a presented name, which comprises the core and the periphery, its emotiveness, its super personal character and others, all these criteria allow to trace back the development of a presidented name in the short term. The advantage of the approach is the testing of the algorithm to identify the status of an onym. So the analysis seems quite satisfying. The conclusions are logical, analytical, and substantive. I don't have anything against the research findings, the so-called propositions. The candidate has published eight papers. Four of them are published in the journals, peer-reviewed journals recommended by the Ministry of Education of the Russian Federation. Now let's turn to critical remarks and questions. The first one concerns 
the first provision or research funding submitting for defense. So here I quote the first research finding taken from pages 11 to 12. In some other parts of the cities, the candidate underscores the differences between a broader approach typical for literary studies and the more narrow approach typical for linguistics. And the linguistic approach deals with such concepts as a presidented text, presidented situation, and a presidented statement or presidented name. And uh, the cultural events are behind the scene. However, in sections 1.1.2, he analyzes presidented situations which shape a complex of the meaning of a presidented names. Could you clarify, please? Can we really regard precedents disregarding the general cultural context? And my second critical remarks, remark is on page 63, some leaders of the Ukrainian oppositions are described as three musketeers. And they you say that there, the expressiveness and emotionality is shaped not only due to the presidented name, but also by the attribute, uh, uncoordinated attribute, which gives the noble characteristics uh, to the described persons and uh, makes the statement ironic. So can we say that there is a special presidented style used in parodies or pastiche? If so, can we regard it as a type of precedented phenomena with heuristic potential? In conclusion, Professor Bandakar states that the cities by Evgeny Stepanov function of presented names in German media complies with the major requirements set forth in the relevant order of St. Petersburg State University on granting academic degrees and the candidate can be awarded the degree of the candidate of science specialization 10204 Germanic languages. Item 11 of the relevant order was not violated. So this was the report by Professor Nikolai Bandeka. Mr. Stepanov, could you please answer the questions posed by Professor Bandeka? Unfortunately, Professor Bandeka couldn't make it to this session. The first one was, is it possible to draw a sharp dividing line between a president situation and the cultural context? As I said earlier, a president's name often is often founded on a president situation. And the president's name can also include um, an idea of a model situation, which includes some cultural phenomenon. But the, it's verbal implementation, the present name itself, can contain information about relevant cultural phenomena. So these, they are kind of indirectly embodied into a present name. As for the list, of presented phenomena, I have, of course, that's an incomplete lead list. For example, in the dissertation, I have an idea about presented deonyms. These are derivatives that retain the status of the original stem. It's possible to speak about the special presented style when a presented phenomena is unfolded in this course. This opens up vistas for further research because we can uh, speak about a special presented style. I'd like to pay your attention to 
proper names as well because they can acquire the status of precedented uh, later on. Thus, we can study precedented appellatives later. And we have one more report on the cities submitted by Professor Doctor of Philology from Greifswald University, Professor Walter Harry. The dissertation by Evgeny Stepanov focuses on precedented names typical for German language culture. It uses the methods of cultural linguistics and linguistic semantics. It is in line with modern research in and cognitive science because it's written at the interface of cultural linguistics, cognitive linguistics, and others. The theory of precedence is rather new for linguistics and is being actively developed in Russia. He switches to, based on the Russian tradition, he tries to extrapolate the this knowledge on the German material. He has established a corpus of examples and this required the usage of other theories and the advantage here is the emotional and cognitive approach to describe difficult cases. This is, is written in good, clear language it comprises an introduction, three chapters, a conclusion, and the rest of uh, reference references. The major conclusions are as follows. Number one, presented names are regarded as a special linguistic discursive element. And there is a classification of criteria which make precedented names as such, such as superpersonal character, internal structure, denotative and connotative function of precedented names and others. Another advantage is the mechanism of lexicalization and gra grammaticalization of precedented names. Along with these advantages, when reading the cities, I could make notes of uh, certain debatable issues. However, they do not anyhow undermine the general positive impression I have of the figures. Question number one, are the presented names only those which are stable in the German language, or can we say that presented semantics can be developed um, as regards one day events and situations. What about the section where you write um, about contextual transformation of presented names? Looks like you should have written about that in the second chapter. This is a, this is a critical remark which concerns the structure of your study. In general, I believe that Stepanov's studies complies with major requirements to force in the relevant order. Further, the summary is that the candidate can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of science in Germanic languages. Mr. Stepanov. You're welcome to answer the questions from this report. I'd like to thank the distinguished professor for his report. As for the stability of connotations in the language, I have already partly answered this question. We follow the views of other scholars, and we believe that presented semantics can be developed in recent 
events or can develop be developed in those words and phrases which have existed in the language for uh, some time already. As for contextual transformation of alternate names, we included this into the chapter which analyzes the use of names in media discourse because uh, their usage is specific really to this type of discourse. Then we would like to give the floor to the CIDIS supervisor, Libor Grigorgiva, Associate Professor of the Department of German, the German Language, St. Petersburg State University. You're welcome to read out or to present your report. I will not read out my report due to time constraints. What I'd like to say is that I have known Evgeny Stepanov for many years. I guess I remember him even as the first year student on a bachelor program. I was his advisor when he wrote his master's studies and his PhD studies is not a follow-up, it's a new topic, and I'm witnessing how he is developing as a scholar. He already teaches at our department, and students give really positive feedback about his classes, and we have positive feedback from our colleagues from uh, German universities who visited his classes. And I hope that he will not give up studying because he is a great learner and his studies has given him an impetus as a scholar and as a teacher as well. Thank you. We are now starting a Q&A session. Are there any non-board attendees who would like to take the floor? Could you please introduce yourself before you start. Konstantin Filipov, Professor, PhD in Philology. Could you please use the microphone? I met Stepanov in 2012 in Freiburg. So I'm giving my regards to Professor Auer because right after the meeting with Auer, I had a meeting with Evgeny Stepanov and this is when I met him. The views that Professor Stepanov has as a scholar are tested and validated at every conference we visit together. And I really could witness how he is developing as a scholar, how he is progressing up the scholarly career. So I'm for conferring the degree. He is a really promising scholar, and I wish him good luck. Thank you, Professor Filipov. Now the floor is given to Professor Tritikova. Professor of the Department of English Philology and Translation. So I'd like to say a few words in support of the CIDES. First off, I'd like to thank for this opportunity to speak here at this panel session. It was really interesting to listen to the criticism that you had. And I'd like to highlight that the works by Professor Peter Auer are really uh, widely known in St. Petersburg. So thank you for your work. Presidented names as uh, the category of discourse is really a real crucial for, for the for the discourse. Presidented names are crucial for the discourse. They really affect the language, and it's really interesting to study them. Several years ago, at our department, we focused on the presidented names in advertising uh, discourse 
the focus was on the ludic function mostly, uh, not in line with the Bakhtin's theory, though, but from the point of view of the discourse. Now, less important are the cognitive aspects of the study. I'd like to say that real communication is complex or difficult. Here I quote Lakov. He wrote a lot about conceptual metaphor. What I find difficult in the discussion is that that the thesis is really multifaceted and comprehensive. That's why we here have some issues which Stepanov should not highlight that much. For example, the notative and connotative semantics. Because what you focus basically is the so-called procedural semantics. And there you can work not with Zin und Bedeutung, but you can work with conceptual meaning. If I could vote, I would vote for conferring the degree. Are there any more attendees who would like to take the floor? If not, then we are proceeding with the agenda. And now we have to discuss the Viva procedure. So I kindly ask to switch the broadcast. And the non-board attendees are requested to leave the hall.
Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we continue the panel session of the Visitation Board. I kindly ask you to switch off the broadcast and make sure that it's on. So these are the decisive moments of the panel session of the Visitation Board. I put for the vote the issue of conferring the academic degree in conformity with item 23 of the order on granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. Let me remind you that the decision of the dissertation board on conferring the academic degree is positive, provided it has received 50% of the votes from no fewer than three members of the dissertation board. So I'm posing the same question again to members of the dissertation board. Professor Nifedov, I vote in for and against. I'm voting for member of the dissertation board, Professor Hamikova. What's your opinion? I'm voting for conferring the degree. Professor Auer, member of the dissertation board, what's your opinion? Against. Okay, your opinion is against, and I am chair of the dissertation board. Give my opinion. I'm for conferring the degree. So if we count the votes, we see that four out three out of the four board members present here today have voted for, and one board member has voted against. We don't have anyone who has abstained from voting. So let me read out the statement of the dissertation board on conferring or non conferring the academic degree of the candidate of science. Evgeny Stepanov is awarded the academic degree of the candidate of science in Germanic languages. My congratulations to Evgeny Stepanov. Now the floor is yours for the closing speech. Please try to be brief. I'd like to thank all the members of the dissertation board and the chair of the board and all the distinguished professors for their interest, for the time and effort you introduced into reading my thesis. Thank you for your critical remarks, remarks and commentary. I would also like to thank Lyubov Gigoyeva, my thesis advisor. We started our collaboration uh, back in, in the master's program and it's a great pleasure for me and a great honor for me to continue this partnership later during my postgraduate studies. I'd like to thank the Department of the German Language and its head for the training that I received during the years of study here, for the opportunity to become part of the academic staff. I'd like to thank the dissertation board support department for the organization of the panel session, the academic council and our faculty for your support and your contribution. Thank you to one and all. So the panel session is over. I'd like to thank everyone for their participation. Let's switch off the broadcast. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.